Hi y'all, in this video I'll be responding to part of a video done by ContraPoints, formerly known as Nicotine2, who uh, has recently returned to YouTube after a long hiatus. Welcome back Nicotine. I was made aware of this video because of a video done by Hazenberg, linked to it below. Um, Nicotine, I'm going to respond to part of your video that you just put up a little bit about Thunderfoot. Uh, I have issues with more of what you said than what I'm going to cover here, but I'm only going to cover a small part here, and this is the clip I want to talk about. He doesn't respond to or even seem to be aware of the body of scientific evidence suggesting that misogyny is real, that workplace discrimination hurts women, and that a culture hostile to women is particularly bad in STEM fields. You know, like the field that he's in. Okay, so I'm going to address what you had to say there and then give you a challenge, so stick around for the challenge later on. Uh, I think I can fairly characterize your argument as Thunderfoot does not seem to be aware of the scientific literature that misogyny is real, workplace discrimination, invidious discrimination, I presume, injures women, and that this is especially a concern in the STEM fields. Okay, so uh, Thunderfoot does not deny that misogyny exists. He's aware of it. Uh, there are people who hate women. The only uh, questions to be decided are uh, how pervasive is it? What are its effects? Is it to be found in a place where it is claimed to exist? And does it exist uh, to the extent that it is claimed? Think things of that nature. Not whether it does or doesn't exist, but to what degree does it exist? And what is its impact? Uh, invidious discrimination obviously harms people. And then uh, your discussion about uh, the STEM fields, of which uh, Thunderfoot is, is a member. Okay, uh, so it's difficult to talk to a layman because you will often lack the analytic skills required to understand why it is that scientists don't take seriously what you think science is. So you and I are going to disagree uh, very sharply, I think, about what constitutes science. Now, in that section of the video I played, you put up three screenshots, one of which was to a news article, not science, the second of which was to a, uh, um, a meta-analysis, which I'll address in a minute, and the third was uh, to a psychological paper. So the first one links to a news article which is titled uh, Women Considered Better Coders But Only If They Hide Their Gender. Uh, if you go find the study that this is based off of, you will notice a couple of things straight away. One of which it's not science, it's not peer-reviewed, says so right at the top and then on every page of it. Uh, it has not been published by any scientific journal ever yet. Uh, maybe it will in the future after it's been fixed, but who knows. And there are some problems with both the article to which you link. A good sleight of hand, uh, by the way, if I were going to want to persuade people that I, I have the ghost of a point here, I would probably do something like that because linking straight to the article to anyone who, uh, not the article, but the supposed scientific article, um, anyone who has any training will understand that there are some problems with it and some big ones. But in, in any event, the news article um, does not even fairly represent what is shown in this study to the extent that the study is valid. And I'll refresh your memory. But only if they hide their gender. Only if they hide their gender. Well, if you go read on page 7, if we exclude insiders from our analysis from women's acceptance rates, 64.4%, continues to be significantly higher than men's, 62.7%. Uh, there are four categories, man, woman, insider, outsider, and insider, outsider on GitHub depends on your relationship to the projects you're working on or something like that. Now, they're excluding this uh, from the analysis in the, in the paper at various points in order to play up the fact that women supposedly uh, are not, are not uh, graded uh, appropriately if their sex is known. But if you do it blindly, then they will get the, their just, resort, uh, just desserts. The curious thing here is GitHub does not publish data, inf does not publish information on people's sex. So in order to, to figure out who's what, the uh, authors of the study did some data mining and then compared email addresses against Google Plus profiles for a million or so people. And then for the other several millions that they couldn't make any determination on by that means, they had a program that went through a combination of a program and then some hand, by hand review, I guess. But they went through, and if it had a male picture associated with the profile, that belonged to a male. If it had a male-looking name, that was a male, things of that nature. So it's really dodgy on that front. But in any event, if, if we exclude insiders from our analysis, why would they do that? Well, if you go to page 15, you'll find uh, figure 5, under which you'll, you'll read, For insiders, we observe little evidence of bias when we compare women with gender-neutral profiles and women with gendered profiles, since both have about equivalent acceptance rates. Now go back to page 7. 
that the the 6.4 to uh, the difference between 64.4 percent and 62.7 percent was described as a significantly higher acceptance rate. So about a percent and a half is significantly higher. Well, if you look at Figure 5, you can see that for the inside group, women underperform relative to men. They're graded uh, more harshly relative to men until they disclose their sex, at which point then they're graded higher than men, and you have the opposite effect in the outside group. So the news article that you cited to does not even fa fairly characterize the study itself uh, doing a bit of picking and choosing about what to emphasize and what to de-emphasize so as to push the narrative that they claim to be oh so surprised to have found. So there's a problem, uh, many other problems in it, uh, but that's one of them. So on to the, the meta-analysis that you put up. It, the a meta-analysis works a little bit like this. Um, you take a whole bunch of studies that have been done, you put them together, and the good effects of all those studies flop out. Uh, and that's, that's, I mean, the good effects are what you have as a result of the meta-analysis, and all the shit just, just falls out and it, it disappears. Why that should be the case, rather than it's just all the shit that comes out as the final result, and as, as opposed to all the good stuff falling through the cracks, is never quite well explained. But the, the reasoning of it goes a little bit like, uh, or the idea goes a little bit like this. Uh, this study has some problems, this study has some problems, that study has some problems. A shit study, shit study, shit study, shit study, put them all together. Great study. As opposed to the normal course of affairs in the world, where if you have an error here, and an error here, and an error there, and you put them all together, what you tend to get out is a worse product, not a better product. The meta-analysis in the social sciences has exactly the opposite effect. You put together a whole bunch of garbage, and what you get out is a pearl, as opposed to uh, the other way, instead of getting out more garbage. It's very curious, but there you have it. The third study um, deals with uh, sex, uh, I'm sorry, the stereotyping threat against women in, STEM, in, in mathematics. Uh, now, this study, as it, as it says, um, their sample sizes were about 28, 30 people, but putting it off to the side, whatever. Uh, they're studying an, uh, an oddity in this supposed influence of, of stereotyping, and that's what's keeping the woman down. Namely, that it doesn't exist where the, the work to be done is easy. So on, on uh, math exams, where the women are comfortable with the material, they do as well as the men. Okay. It only appears at the difficult, when you give them extremely hard stuff that pushes their limits, where they're exposed to high stress, short time frames, uh, to get the work done. Uh, lots riding on it when you really pressure them and when it's something they're not uh, comfortable with, the, the material. Uh, and in the examples, uh, the three different studies they did in this one publication, uh, the people weren't expected to be able to finish the tests. They weren't expected to be able to finish the problems. It was intentionally designed to be a little bit beyond them to, to test this. And it only appears there, this, this pressure. What you can do with eye color, hair color, I mean you can do it on a whole, a whole bunch of other fronts. And so what it shows, uh, going through there, is that you can change how well women perform relative to men um, based on whether or not you tell them ahead of time, based on whether or not they ahead of time are told that they're, they're in, in history, these types of tests, these types of problems have showed a gender disparity, men versus women. When women go in and they're told that this is historically true, they seem to do less well as compared against, man, uh, against men. The observation that's not emphasized in this is that even when you, when you tell them that there isn't a sex difference, and you can go look through, the, through your own uh, study there, the one thing that you can't help but notice is that in, on every graph, men do in fact outperform the women, without an exception. So even when they're told there's no sex distinction here, there's no sex difference in results, there are still sex difference in these results. So you, you have just got to confront, confront that. And one of the reasons for this is the variability in men is larger than the variability in women and the ensemble differences in men and women. Another way to think about this is that you get more geniuses, but more idiots. More men get Nobel Prizes, more men wind up homeless. Uh, so in any event, there are just always problems here. And whenever a, 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 a lay person like yourself uh, brings this up. You remember when you used to debate with creationists, or argue with creationists, uh, you know, the Gish Gallup, if you have a limited time frame and it takes five uh, minutes to, to disprove every point that takes, you know, just one minute to uh, propose, 
then if your uh, if the creationist has a five minute introduction, you would need a 25 minute response period in order to be able to address the five uh, discrete claims there. So the effort that goes into explaining why a bare assertion is false, it takes a lot more work and a lot more time than just making the bare assertion itself. So too is that true here. But uh, instead of doing it that way and going through these, uh, which I've given a very cursory overview with, what I'm going to do is link you to a study I'm surprised you didn't use because feminists uh, seem to love it, and it is uh, it was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and it is uh, science faculty has gender, uh, subtle gender bias uh, towards male students. I'll put a link to it below. And what I would like for you to do, Nicotine, is for you to read that, uh, that study. It's not all that long. Look it over, think about it very carefully, and get back to me. Either make a video with your analysis of it, or email me, or contact me, we'll figure out how to do this. And you tell me what, if any, problems you see in that study. This is a test. I'm going to see how analytic your mind is to see whether or not there's fruit to be born in engaging in a real rigorous conversation with you with respect to science, a subject in which I don't think you're well educated, and I, um, I don't think you have the analytic skills. You don't have the chops to actually pull this off. You may, but I, I think we both know you're not a scientist. This is not your bailiwick. This is not a subject in which you're uh, well educated. But we shall see. So you give me your analysis of what problems you think are in there, or if any at all, and then we'll, we'll talk. So that's my challenge to you. Have a great day.